All right, so this time the question reads, if initially a gas is at 84 kilopascals and a temperature of 35 degrees Celsius, and I heat it an additional 230 degrees Celsius, what will be the new pressure? Assume the volume of the container is constant. Please note that this time our pressure is in kilopascals. That's just another unit of pressure, okay? Don't freak out about it. There's a little K to mean k kilo, K-I-L-O, like kilometer, kilogram, kiloliter, all of that, same K. K for kilo, pascal. P-A, capital P, lowercase a, that's a pascal, okay? Kilo pascal. We could also be given our units of pressure in pascals, which would just be a capital PA. And the same as everything else, there are a thousand pascals in one kilopascal. Okay? It is a nice, easy unit of measure to understand. And I've written here the conversion factor for atmospheres to kilopascals. One atmosphere is 101.325 kilopascals. So, now we can get started. Uh, the first thing we do, as always, is write our knowns and our unknowns. Once we do that, we can give it a real go. So first, uh, initially, our gas is at 84 kilopascals. That sounds like a pressure 1 to me. 84 kilopascals. Okay, this is 84 kilopascals. And our temperature is initially T1 at 35 degrees Celsius. The first thing we do with temperature every time, convert it to Kelvin. So 35 plus 273 gives us 308 Kelvin, okay? And we heat it an additional 230 degrees Celsius. T2 equals our 35 degrees Celsius plus 230 degrees Celsius. Okay, please note it said it heated it an additional 230, not we heat it to 230, okay? That's a very clear distinction that needs to be made. Don't make a mistake on the test if it says heat it up an additional 230 instead of heat it to 230. 230 is not our final temperature. 230 is what we add to our initial temperature, okay? So now we have... 265 degrees Celsius and... That is 538 Kelvin, okay? So we want to know what our new pressure is. P2 equals, and we don't know. Um, we can assume that our volume is constant, and we can assume, because it doesn't say otherwise, that our number of moles is constant. So, oh, this should go over here. Sorry about that. Unknown is P2. Okay, so now we have a change going on, which means that we <coughs> are going to use the combined gas law. Technically, there are two ways to do this, really. We could use the combined gas law because we have a change, and then we could just cancel out our... We could just cancel out our constants. We know N1 is constant, we know V1 is constant, and that leaves us with P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. This should look familiar. This is one of our other laws. Which law is it? Oh, that hasn't been on the screen, all this stuff I wrote. Okay, P1 over V1, P1 V1 over N1 T1 equals P2 V2 over N2 T2. Cancel the Vs, cancel the N because they're constant. They'll use this with P1 T over T1 equals P2 over T2. You should know which law that is. I'm not going to tell you. You should already know that from our notes on Friday. So, <clears throat> now we're going to isolate the variable. We want P2 to be by itself. 
So we're going to put P2 equals, and if we multiply both sides by T2, P1, T2 over T1, then we've algebraically isolated the variable that we're looking for. Now we can just plug things in. P2 equals P1, 84 kilopascals, times T2, 538 Kelvin, over T1, 308 Kelvin. Notice, we're still in kilopascals here. That means our answer is going to be in kilopascals. We didn't have to um, convert to atmospheres because we're not using the ideal gas constant. We didn't use capital R, so we don't have to change this. Technically, we didn't have to change to Kelvin either. We could have left that in degrees Celsius, but I went ahead and changed to Kelvin anyway, but you're going to have to do it a lot of times anyway. You might as well get used to it. So anyway, now we put that into our calculator. 84 times 538 over 308, and we get 146.7 kilopascals, which is our final answer.